Hi everyone, my name's uh, Clinton Valandis. I'm the GIS developer at New Plymouth District Council and uh, welcome to my presentation on uh, water meter reading using ESRI field apps. I'm just gonna begin the presentation um, by uh, going through a bit of an introduction. Um, we'll look at uh, GIS at New Plymouth District Council. Um, we'll have a bit of a dive into the existing water meter reading process um the one that needed to be replaced uh, we'll look at the project scope and technical design of the new new process um, we'll also then move into more of the uh, data preparation um, how we use notebooks to um, prep, prep for collector um, how we use collector and how we use arcade uh, then we'll look at survey one two three we'll have a look at a couple of our awesome dashboards that we've got set up uh, for uh, for management purposes. We'll also touch on uh, the trial of Navigator that we did and then finally look at how we get data back out. So GIS at New Plymouth District Council. Um, New Plymouth District Council is a full ESRI shop, so um, we are running an internal and external facing um, ArcGIS um, enterprise deployment um, on 10.7.1. Uh, we've been running that for about a year now and um, it's been quite a a um, paradigm shift for us, I suppose, in, um, in working with um, portals, and etc. Um, we also make extensive use of ArcGIS Online, um, and we've just um, uh, released uh, the latest version of Open Data Portal. So if anyone's looking for data in our region, I suggest you can check it out, it's really good. Um, in terms of staffing, we have four staff in what, what you call the IT part of council. Um, we've got a GIS lead uh, developer, that's me. Um, one senior GIS analyst and a GIS analyst. Um, and we've got some other GIS resources sprinkled um, amongst other teams. So two technicians in infrastructure and one GIS analyst in the planning department. Um, in terms of other uh, spatial tool sets, uh, we've got FME desktop and we've just installed FME server. So looking forward to seeing how we can uh, utilize that a bit more. So what was the existing water meter reading process uh, like, the one that we have to replace? Um, it predominantly relied on old Meteor handheld devices, um, as shown in the picture on the right there. Um, the, the devices are hard to read and they have tiny, uh, tiny gray scale screens. Um, data entry is quite difficult. You need to use a stylus. It's not a touch screen. Um, from what I understand, they have really bad battery life and um, there have been occasions where people have been out reading a route and the battery's died and um, they have to start again because the data's not stored in the memory. Um, the other um, frustration with these devices is that the meter, meter, water meters have to be read in a predefined order. Um, so that makes it quite cumbersome. Um, and the traditional backup plan, uh, printed Excel spreadsheets. So we could do better than that. So what was our project scope? What were we trying to achieve? We're gonna, we wanted to provide a GIS-based solution to re record the water meter readings. Um, the readings had to be taken on, on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, and a yearly basis. So um, for the monthlies, um, that's our uh, 15 largest water users in the, in the uh, district. Uh, quarterly, uh, the um, other build me uh, water meters, approximately 2,500. And then on yearly, we could be doing up to 7,000. Um, and that number will increase as we install more meters. Um, we had to provide the ability to extract and convert the data from our Technology One ERM, our record management system, into a spatial format. Um, the solution that we're going to provide um, had to be offline first. There's a, there are a number of areas in the district where uh, cell phone coverage uh, can be a bit dicey. So we tried to uh, make that uh, a key consideration. We need to provide the complete water meter readings back uh, in a format that Tech One could um, actually ingest as well. Um, and we also wanted to look at the ability to route water meters um, in the most efficient way. So technical design overview, how are we gonna do this? So we use SQL table views um, uh, in what we call a data warehouse to extract data from Tech One. Uh, we use FME to translate the Technology One data into an appropriate GIS format. Um, and then we propose that we use ESRI field apps to actually read the water meters in the field, predominantly collector uh, backed up by Survey123. 
um, ArcGIS Online uh, would be used to store the water meter readings. And then finally, FME would uh, then be used to extract the data from uh, ArcGIS Online hosted feature layers back uh, to a format that Tech One could use. Um, we also wanted to look uh, at using ESRI's network analysis functionality to route water meter reading in the most efficient manner. So what are the ESRI field apps? Um, I quite like this diagram I pulled off the web. Um, essentially, the water meter read, our proposed water meter reading process uh, utilised the capture side there in the diagram. So collector to store the water meter reading, um, servo one, two, three for reporting uh, any that are out of place or need maintenance. Um, we also looked at navigator um, a little bit and I'll touch on that later. Uh, and we also trialled a little bit of workforce um, as well. So which field apps we use? So we utilize the following field apps. Collector for storing water meter reading, um, as I said previously. Survey123 to report any water meters in the wrong location. Uh, trial Navigator and Workforce. So the new process, how do we, how, how, what do we use for data preparation? So we use um, FME essentially to extract all our data from uh, uh, table views of te table views from technology one. Um, FME basically joins the spatial locations of the water meters held in our GIS system uh, with the attribute data held in tech one. Uh, and that's an illustration of my nice uh, FME work there, Todd Davis, if you're listening. So after um, the data uh, is outputted to a hosted feature layer in um, ArcGIS Online via FME. Um, we use notebooks to uh, basically go through a, a series of steps, um, setting up the symbology. Um, that symbology is all predefined. I have that um, in my uh, notebook. Um, the the pop-ups are styled. We create some coded domains. Um, we enable photo attachments. Um, so one of the requirements is to read uh, is to take photos of each meter as they've been read. Um, we enable delete protection. Uh, Murphy's law says that someone will be playing around in ArcGIS Online and delete your main feature layer, which would be very painful. So do that automatically. Um, enable sharing of require uh, sharing to required groups. Um, update feature layers um, to include sync and change tracking. You need that to go offline. Um, it creates the overall web map. Updates properties such as title, description, snippets, and tags and creates the host of uh, feature layer views for required routes. So essentially um, the notebook will step through um, and output a route based on um, codes in the data. Um, and there are more manageable chunks that the uh, readers can use. Um, the notebook saves and shares the web map and then enables offline collection. Uh, imagery, so we use an uh, imagery tile package um, for the district. Um, predominantly created this for uh, offline use. Um, so uh, the tile imagery tile package created from the Esri World Imagery Service, um, which includes um, the Plymouth uh, District Council's aerial imagery along with satellite imagery. Satellite imagery. And we've actually sideloaded these T, uh, TPK packages onto devices. Um, really useful. Um, uh, to have it already stored on the device so you don't need to download it for each offline area. Uh, so how do we use Collector? So basically the routes are stored as hosted feature layer views uh, in Collector and they can be toggled on and off. Um, the hosted layer views correspond to, to gauges in the dashboard for progress monitoring. So basically uh, as each route is read, the gauge is updated on the dashboard um, and within Collector, we're using arcade expressions to indicate if there are any data entries, uh, entry errors. So that's um, arcade controlling expressions, and I'll touch on that in a bit more. Um, this is just a quick, a, cu a couple of quick screen snaps of um, our Collector interface, uh, nice and simple. Uh, the first one on the left here, you can see uh, the, to uh, the routes that, are, that it can be toggled on and off. Uh, for example, New Plymouth Central West is on there. Um, the, meter reader can go and do that route um, when he's finished he or she's finished then move on to the next one just toggle it on and off um, the actual interface is really simple we're really only collecting the meter reading um, the reading type on there that's actually just the coded domain and the reading is the default 
um, the meter reader can also enter comment and uh, and override any um, uh, readings if they think they're valid. So how do we use Arcade? So Arcade, uh, this is the first time I've used Arcade um, and I found it to be quite powerful. Uh, we're using it to control attributes and pop-ups such as status field, status color, status font, and bolding of current reading. Um, and I'll give you some examples in a minute. Um, we're also using Arcade to validate the symbology and collector. So basically as uh, the water reader uh, reading is entered, um, if it's valid, it'll, the symbology will change to another color. Um, and uh, that's really useful in, in, in the field to um, validate your data collection. And I suppose one of the key benefits of actually using Arcade in the first place is that you can calculate data on the fly without adding additional fields, which is quite powerful. So Arcade Symbology, so basically um, those are our five uh, classes of uh, meter reading um, and each of the meter symbol, uh, symbols is, is driven by Arcade. Um, and here I'm just going into a bit more detail about what each Arcade uh, symbol is. So the purple um, basically hasn't been read. Um, the red, red exclamation mark, Era current reading less than previous means that the uh, water meter reader has put in a value that's less than the, the last reading and that violates the business rule. So um, Arcade is written in there to check that. Um, the yellow diamond uh, possible error outside range check reading, that's checking to see if the reading that's been entered is 30% more than the last reading. Um, if it is, it could possibly be an error. Um, and that that can actually be checked and validated so the final green diamond is valid overridden so the user actually has the opportunity to override uh, the error if they if they're confident that, that that the number they've put in is correct um so the arcade expressions so that's just a, a quick example of what the um, arcade um, is doing in the background to control the uh, symbology um, we're also using custom attribute displays of the pop-ups, so um, we've, we've customised that quite extensive, uh, extensively just to uh, give um, context to the water meter. So, for example, its ID, its address, some um, description of its location. We're also using arcade and um, arcade expression there, for example, on status uh, and the current reading. So, arcade expressions for colour are status and field. So Essentially, if um, the water uh, read, meter reader enters the correct value, then the uh, status in the field will go green, and that's actually controlled by this arcade expression. Um, and then you can see it highlighted in the red uh, circle there, status of valid as actually corresponds to a color of green. So um, arcade is told that if the if the valid value is if the if the value if the value entered is valid then return the hex color of green. Uh, how do we use survey one two three? So we've got deep link from collector to survey one two three, um, which is very handy. Um, survey one two three pre-populates a series of attributes and it allows the water meter reader to report the location of the meter uh, if the location of the meter needs revising. Um, and also any maintenance issues. Um, users can uh, take context photos, annotate sketches, et cetera. Um, a little bit more uh, involved for our readers um, for Survey123, but the uptake's been really good, so I can't see any issues with that in the future. Uh, this is just a quick screen dump of what our um, Survey123 uh, form looks like. You can see there that, that the deep the deep link is on the collector on the left and then it fires up survey123, pre-populates asset ID, meter ID, the route and address. And then there's a number of a series of questions that can be um, updated. And that's just the logic behind my survey123. Uh, now we're getting into dashboards. How do we use dashboards? This one's the, uh, we, dashboards are quite useful. Um, this is the overall status of the, pro, of the read. Um, so, Essentially, this one tells um, management how many uh, water meters were read on a day, uh, yesterday, two days ago, 
Um, and it's quite an interactive tool for seeing wh which part of the cities have been read and, and how the, how uh, the read is progressing. Um, this one's my favourite one. Um, this is a series of gauges. So each route, is, each water meter reading route um, is associated with a gauge. And this is really a really good visual tool for um, resource allocation. Um, if certain routes need to be done, they, then um, readers can be sent out. You can see how many need to be done. Maybe, for example, you're doing New Plymouth Central, which is 391, and you need to put someone else on there. Uh, you can see that very easily. Um, so yeah, dashboard is really, really useful and really positive feedback from management about um, getting visual um, progress. Uh, we trialed Navigator um, with StreetMap Premium. Um, actually what this did, it allowed us to do turn by turn navigation for each water meter. Um, stops had the curb approach assigned for safety. So um, water meters could only be read from the left-hand side of the vehicle. Um, we haven't... We haven't um, adopted this yet, um, but um, it could provide an, uh, it could be adopted um, on health and safety benefits alone, and we're looking to push that forward. Um, it could also be used in the future um, for uh, water meter reading personnel from outside the district. Um, they won't need any no uh, prior knowledge of meter locations. And that's just an example. Um, on the right of a route that I did. Um, quite interesting, I actually went and trialed and drove around that. Um, it seems a bit illogical at, at times it's to where it's routing you, but you've got to remember that it's trying to make sure that if you are going to read, you're only going to read on the left-hand side of the vehicle so you don't have to cross roads. So it's quite logical. Data extraction. Um, once all the meter reading's done, we extract the data from the hosted feature layer um, to a text file using FME again. Um, and the photos are also extracted and date stamped for future reference. So if we get any complaints about the actual reading being incorrect, um, we can actually drag that photo up. Uh, finally, how have ESRI field apps significantly improved efficiency and accuracy of water meter reading? So easier to locate meters on the ground. Um, most of the pe pe uh, field staff are using um, Android tablets um, can, with um, high-res aerials can see where the uh, water meters are. Um, they can uh, request that the water meter location be revised. They can note any um, issues with um, the meter, maybe the screen needs replacing. A um, lot less fat fingering of data entry, no really random weird values. Um, meters, meters can be read in any order. You can go down one street, do half of that, and then come back and do the next half. Uh, no issues. Um, it's easier to monitor to progress through the uh, it's easier to monitor progress in the field through the arcade topology. So as the meter is read, the topology is changing accordingly. Um, it's really easy to monitor progress through the use of the dashboard um, and management have really liked that. Um, can be run on any device. I, I run it on my iPhone. And as I said, our field staff mainly using Android. Um, it's easy to train field staff. We had a lot of hesitant technology. Uh, hesitant, uh, staff that were hesitant um, about using new technology, but they've come on board and um, after about three or four reads, we haven't heard anything from them. So they're really into it now. Um, the time to read the water meter is significantly reduced, um, lots of less frustration. Um, it's a seamless process from end to end. Um, easy to perform data extracts using FME and basically uh, we can automate most of the process using web map crash using notebooks. That's all I've got. Thank you very much. Any questions?